Oh yeah, Sunset Rewind coming at you. Very special episode today, the Raider episode. And we have none other than Tom Telesco, the Las Vegas Raiders general manager. I can't tell you how stoked I am that you're here. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Hey, I appreciate it's the awesome. flag. I appreciate the shirt. I, the quick change from the Chargers to the Raiders. So I'm a diehard Raiders fan. When that news first broke, I was getting text messages from uh, people saying, hey man, the Raiders are hiring Telesco. I was like, my, teach my class. I was like, what? I was like, so we know stoked. that guy. That is yeah, so I was so stoked. Oh. So I'm texting everybody back. I'm like, great hire. You know, great hire. I'm like, I'm, I'm so stoked on that. So ah, it's glad that you're part of the Raider Nation now. It's so I awesome to have it, you man. on board. So first question I want to ask you is, you know, the Raiders are not only an iconic team in the NFL, but really they're recognized all around the world. How long did it take to hit you that you are now a part of like Raider Nation, which is iconic? You know, it's, it's uh, professional sports is just crazy. I mean, like, you know, life hits you quick. You know, I'm with the Chargers for 11 years. And then uh, a couple weeks later, I'm walking into a press conference with the Raiders pin on my, my suit, and, you know, doing a press conference. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a global fan base. It's also a great fan base in Las Vegas. Um, but the, the history of the team, uh, the players and the coaches that I've played there, like I walk through the building and see all the, all the murals and the pictures of the Hall of Famers and all-time Raiders. I mean, it's just staggering. Uh, so it's, it's just a great to be a part of that. What was the first thing as a GM that you did once you got hired? Because I know you got 5,000 things on oh, your man. plate. <laughs> uh, I make a lot of lists. Right. So I make a lot of lists, check them off as you go. It's, um, you know, when I was with the Chargers, like for 11 years, like I knew how the building ran. Like I closed my eyes and know everything ran. But you come into a new building, um, different workflow, different people. Um, and then just as a team, like I knew the Raiders players as an opponent. Correct. But it's just different knowing them. Um, on the inside with everything that goes into that. So it's really trying to get to know the players, get to know the team, get to know all the staff there, you know, training staff, equipment staff, video staff, all the support staff that works into it. So it's just been a lot of learning the last two weeks. Right. So you had a, a good playing career. You played at John Carroll University. You're originally from the Buffalo area, yep. correct? Yep. So, you know, anybody who's ever played football dreams of playing in the NFL, but the statistics say only 1.6% of guys that ever play collegiate football will make it to the NFL. Mm -hmm. So. What advice would you give to someone whose playing career is coming to an end, but they want to pursue a career in the NFL, maybe doing something other than playing? Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. My, my path was so much different because when I was growing up in high school and even when I was in college, I never had any thoughts of working in the NFL. I didn't even know the opportunities were there. Um, I got an internship with the Buffalo Bills really out of luck. Um, I was a college football player. They were looking for some other college players to come help and work training camp. So I got a phone call that, hey, do you want to come work training camp? When you're home over the summer or whatever? Yeah, so it was just a summer job yeah. for, for three summers. And, um, but even when I interned there in the summer, I never thought that this would lead to an NFL job. I just, you know, maybe I was naive, but I was young. But, um, you know, nowadays everybody applies for these jobs. Then they just were looking for people to work. So I did that for three summers. And then the Carolina Panthers were an expansion team. They had to hire a staff from scratch. And the GM from the Bills went to the Carolina Panthers. And uh, he said, hey, why don't you come down and put you to work? And then that kind of took off Just from there. The so, so um, but, you know, for, for, for right now, like, I always tell kids, you know, if you want to work in sports, first of all, it's, it's just hard to get in because the supply of people who want to work and the demand doesn't quite equal out. Um, so, you, you know, get a good degree from a college. Um, and I always tell kids, like, you, you know, you don't, have to, you don't have to play football in college. It'd be nice, but you don't have to. But wherever you go to school, go volunteer at the football program. So get your academics straight, get your major, whatever your major is. Go volunteer in the football department. You can network in there. You can learn a little bit and then apply for internships, you know, coming out of there. Do you think having a degree in business management uh, prepared you for this type of career? Um, it probably did. I don't think it's a necessity. Mm -hmm. um, but I know for my job now, I mean, it's, uh, you know, scouting is like this much. And administration is like this much. It's just part of the job, you know, as a general manager. So, yeah, it probably helps me a little bit. But I always tell kids, like, it probably doesn't matter what your major is. Um, I always wish I had a law degree. Uh, oh, it was yeah. more that than <laughs> compliance. Yeah, yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, I didn't have quite time for that. But, um, but yeah, you know, I, I think you know, just a well-rounded education degree would probably be helpful. I want to ask you, is the GM, are you responsible, I'm assuming, for the salary cap and making sure you're in it? Right. Is that math hard as far as, you know, guys are tired, a guy gets injured, a guy, like trying to balance what money you have available versus what you can pay, front-loading, back-loading? Yeah, the there's, there's just a lot of rules, which is why we have, you know, you know probably a four-person department okay. that's kind of dedicated to strictly cap and contracts. I work with them. Um, yeah, there's a lot of manipulation of contracts and to try and get on the salary cap and what your resources are. So um, we talk about in the NFL, like it's all about asset allocation. 
Right. We all have the same amount of money to spend and how you want to use it. Um, but there's a lot of creative ways you kind of kind of work your way around it. Um, but we have a, like the Raiders have a great staff of people that do it. Um, it's funny how it's evolved over the years. We used to have, you know, really nobody dedicated to that. Just like the, the GM kind of handled that on his own, and then it kind of got bigger, bigger, bigger. And now we've got a staff for three or four that kind of just handle that. I wanted to ask you, you know, since moving to Vegas, the Raiders have become quite profitable. And from what I understand, Mark Davis bears no expense on making the nicest facility possible. Can you talk about like the practice facilities, the weight room, what it's like over there and how it compares to other yeah, teams you've seen? It's, it's, uh, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. Really? Um, you know, I haven't been to every NFL building. I've been to some, been to a lot of college buildings. Um, the, the scope of it, the magnitude, how big it is, what the resources are inside. Like you said, the weight room, the training room, all the resources, like no expense was spared. No expense was spared. So, um, you know, when players come in and kind of see that, um, that dedication, you know, we, we talk about commitment to excellence, where right. you can see it right. when you walk in. You right. know, this tangibly, like I can see the building and then the people that go along with it. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, uh, the commitment is there. You can definitely tell that. I mean, it's all brand new, high end. That's what a great place. Like, that's your work office. Like, yeah, it really is. Yeah. Well, it's more than just, you know, the team. You have that team in the front office, which leads me to my next question. You worked under the legendary Bill Polian for many, many, many years. And anybody who's familiar with the NFL, knows how great a general manager he was and all the success he had. What are some of the valuable lessons that you learned from working under a, a great person like that? Yeah, you know, I mean, I was so him. lucky, you know, probably, you know, 18 years with Bill Polian, who's a Hall of Fame general manager. So just by osmosis, you're there, you kind of learn um, on day to day. Uh, but he used to always say, like, you know, this is not a football business, this is a people business. And it really is. Like our players, and I know they play football for a living, but they're people um, that have lives off the field. Uh, you know, our staff, our coaches, support staff, um, you know, you have to try and create, a, create an environment where everybody wants to work hard. Um, everyone's invested in the goal. Everybody has their own roles, whatever that is, but every role is important. So, um, and just watching how he worked with everybody because, you know, it's, it's a big group of people. Right. Um, you know, you got managing a lot of personalities. Managing a lot of personalities. Um, you know, usually, you know, the GM usually has to have the smallest ego in the room to kind of steer the discussions. I mean, you're talking about a coaching staff of 20 plus people. You're looking at, you know, roster wise during the season, you know, probably north of 70 players. And then all the support staff that goes along with that. Um, it's a lot of people to manage. That's why, like, you know, you're a general manager. And I generally manage a lot of things. <laughs> well, Mo, Mo and I were talking about that. Like uh, when you got the, the Raiders job, you know, I sent you a text congratulating you and you got right back to me. And then Mo texted you to get. And we're like, he got right back to us. Like, so it's like sunset rewind. You know, you got, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. You got bad priorities here. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, we're up on the pecking order, right? Yeah. Um, you know, you were saying as a general manager, you're responsible for a lot. Was it almost a relief that the head coach was already in place? Because, you know, that's just one less thing on your plate. And my next question is how far are you along in filling up the rest of the staff? Yeah, no, it, it was, um, you know, to have a head coach, like when I went in to, to interview for the job, I know he had the interim tag on there, but to me, like he was the head coach. Like he kind of showed during the season what he could do. Um, he was productive with the football team, and they went five and four in the last nine games. Um, so, and, and I, like I said, I had not worked with them before; didn't even know him that well. Uh, the more I've gotten to know him, I can see why they did so well late in the year. So, yeah, it's nice to have that already there. Plus, he has some institutional knowledge of this team that I don't have right now. So, right. that's great. Um, our defensive staff will be pretty much intact. I think we're working on the offensive staff right now. Um, which is like the biggest thing right now because we really can't decide the type of style we're going to play and the type of players we're going to have until we know who the offensive coordinator is. You know, it's funny. I, all my friends are Raider fans. And when they hadn't really given him the official head coach title yet, I was thinking, you guys, what do you think about Harbaugh? Oh, I want, no, we want Pierce. I want Pierce one the whole time, Pierce. yeah. They didn't want Harbaugh. Which, and, and Harbaugh's a good coach. Yeah, Harbaugh's a great coach, but I, I, you're right. I wanted Pierce the whole time. I'm like, let's just let's keep Antonio. He's a great coach. Look, he, and the players like playing for him. He showed he could do it. Right. You know, and I think, I think he fits the Raider style. So when you draft a player, you know, you're investing a lot of money and potential. How, is the, how far back have you gone when looking into a player's past and trying to figure out if that's a guy you want to pick up? Yeah, I mean, I mean we've gone all the way back, um, you know, to check with high school coaches, just how they were. Um, you know, typically when it, talk, when it comes like the evaluation of the player, really just looking at their college tape, whether, you know, freshman to senior year, or, you know, freshman to junior year. Um, but we'll have scouts go back to their high schools and kind of do a little bit of um, have you ever heard of me going to junior high or even elementary school? No, that a no, too much? that's a little bit too much. Wow. Okay, a little bit too much. But it's you know we try and compile as much information as we can. We don't like any surprises when we, when we bring players in. So we want to know what we have. Um, and you know I've told these high school kids like yeah you know everybody who you treat from high school on you know could come back. Right. Um, you know your coaches, your teachers, administrators. Uh, but yeah we we you know these like I said these are 
big investments for us. We want to know everything we can about the player. Right. That was great insight. I watched that uh, video of you on YouTube the other day where you're critiquing the Kevin Costner movie. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was hilarious. And, I mean, that provides, like, such good insight. You know, you're watching that going, well, a general manager might do that, but here's the way I handle it. I was like, it was a really good way to, you know, see how that, that job, how, how the work comes together. That. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things I want to ask you, getting more into the draft, obviously you want to put the best product on the field possible. But at the same time, are you conscious of the teams in your division? For example, Kansas City, they're pretty much in the midst of a dynasty. Yep. Maybe you need a left guard, but with you know Mahomes on the other side, do you go for a pass rush or a DB? Like, how conscious are you of the teams in your division? Because if you want to get to a Super Bowl, it's a lot easier to go as a division champion as opposed to the wild card route. Yeah, and beating them yeah. is the key. Yeah, no, you definitely take that into account. Um, yeah, you win your division, you're automatically in the playoffs, and you have a home game. So right. um, obviously, you know where Kansas City is. Like you always know about Mahomes. Um, now with, with Jim Harbaugh here, we know the style of football they're going to play. And we have Sean Payton in Division Two, so it's a tough division. So, yeah, we do look at those teams. We play them twice. But we right. also want to make sure that they have to defend us, right? right. So, um, so it's, kind of, it's kind of the both ways. But um, you know, the big thing in the draft for us is, is you know, there's accumulating players and accumulating talent or building a team. We want to make sure we're building a team so it's not necessarily just drafting the best player. It's like, what fits us? Okay. What fits us on offense? What fits us on defense? But some of that too is all right. Who are we playing against twice a year? And you know we got these three teams in our division. So yeah, it definitely comes into it. Oh, I love this uh, Raider Nation. We're coming after Kansas City. I love it. I love it. Oh, it's so good. You know your career in Indianapolis coincided with Peyton Manning. So you basically walked through uh, his entire career with him. What was that like working alongside a, a legendary quarterback, one of the greatest to ever play the game? Yeah, it, uh, amazing um, to, to see. You know, really to see how he prepares Monday through Saturday and how the great ones do that. Because we know he's physically, he's obviously very talented, but his preparation was was incredible. Like probably, you know, him, Philip Rivers is probably pretty similar. Um, but to watch Peyton, like we would, you know, the pro scouting department would do advanced scouting reports on the team we we're going to play. And that would go to the coaches or also go to the players. Um, if Peyton saw a typo in the advanced report, he would come down to the pro scouting wow. department and kind of point it out. And it was great because those guys knew, like, hey, he reads every word of this, so I got to be on point the whole time. You know, they talk about those Navy SEALs, how it's just attention to detail. And I mean, they break yep. everything down to the millisecond, and it sounds like Peyton kind of took that mindset to, like, scouting reports. Yeah, like, there, there was one, we were in training camp, and um, we were going to open with the Browns, and that was my team to advance scout. But we're, like, second week of training camp, so we're, we haven't played a preseason game yet. So I really hadn't started doing my work on the Browns yet. Plus, it's the first game of the year, so you don't have a lot to go on. Right. And he grabs me, and he, said, he asked me about one of the linebackers, what his depth is like on play-action pass. Wow. And I wasn't sure, because I really hadn't done them much yet. So I said, well, I'm not sure. Let me get back to you. So I go back to my office, and I'm going through the tape from the year before. The next day, I find him. And I said, all right. And he's like, nope, I got the answer already. Thanks. And he walks away. And it's like, hey, you got to be on like, all okay. the time. Like, you got to be received, on. Message, yeah, like, I, yeah, like, so. Um, but that, see, like, players like him and Tom Brady, they just raised the bar of the organization um, just you think by Peyton, things like that. You think he'd ever consider being a coach? He's great at broadcasting. You, you know, I always love watching him critique the games. But you think he could be successful as a coach in the NFL? Probably uh, seven on seven with his kids right now. I think that's his, uh, right, his that's coaching. His yeah, and you know, being a dad's a full-time yeah, job it's, too, it right? It is, yeah. And, you know, to play as long as he's played, uh, to go into coaching, it's hard. Right, you know, It's just right. a hard business to go into. I don't, I don't know if I see that, but, you know, maybe you know, but he's absolutely GM, crushing president, in television. Owner. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, Dole, you got some questions from fans. Yeah. Uh, we, we have a little segment here. I, I, we reached out to our friends who are big-time Raider fans. All the questions I got were, who are you picking first? Well, like, I'm like, he's not going to answer can't talk about questions. that. He answer, had a I, good... I don't even know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's... And even if you did, you know. You know are they yeah, going to trade up and get right the here. first pick? I'm like, even yeah. if he has the answer, he can't tell us. Yeah. Like, we on, got a, so. a, a student at Cypress High School where I teach. His name's Joshua Fragoso, and he is in one of my classes. And he is a – him and his father are the ultimate diehard Raiders fans. So when I told him I had the opportunity to interview you, I said, well, Josh, if you can come up with a good question, I'll ask Mr. Telesco. Yeah. So this is a question he came okay. up with. This is a sophomore in high school. High stake environments often come with demanding deadlines and pressure to, to de deliver top notch results. How would you handle tight deadlines and high pressure situations while managing various multimedia projects? This is a sophomore in high school? <laughs> sophomore in my English class. You might class. be your future assistant GM. Holy cow. Um, it's just preparation. It's funny he says that because you know during the draft, you're making decisions with a clock ticking over your head. So 
Uh, so a lot of it's just, you know, all this preparation leading into making decisions. Right. Um, and then using a lot of opinions and people. I kind of usually start off with a big group of people with opinions. And then you kind of have a smaller kind of loop of people to kind of lean on at the Narrow end. Narrow it down. Narrow it down, right. correct. So, um, but for me, it's always been about preparation. Like, I don't like any surprises. I don't want to have something come up, say, during the draft where we hadn't talked about, and now the clock's moving. Right. So, um, you know, I always say, like, I'm not the smartest GM in the world, but I'm going to prepare like nobody else can prepare. So we know, no matter what happens, we'll have an answer for it. It doesn't mean that the decision's always right, um, but we're going to go through a good process. But a lot of it's just preparation. Great. Hey, great question, Josh. I'm proud of you, man. Yeah, that's amazing. amazing. Okay. Uh, first of all, i got to give a shout out to your youngest son, Nick. He hooked me up for the next segment. Uh, Cole, can you pull up the monitor? I got a couple photos. I just want to get your reaction. All right, let's go through the first one. What are we looking at? What do we at? got here? Holy cow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is an awful haircut. <laughs> well, it was the early 80s. Or, yeah. You know. Yeah, no, that's in the, that's <laughs> the 70s, bro. No, I'd say yeah, it was maybe the, yeah, it's probably like late 70s. Was early that 80s. back in Buffalo? That's in Buffalo, yeah. You know, That's the best we could do, huh? <laughs> I got a couple more. Yeah. We're going to progressively get better. Right? Hey, this was Nick and your wife, so they're the ones who sent yeah. me. All right. All right. That's what are we looking at cool. here? That's uh, my freshman year in college. So that's yeah. a John Carroll. John yeah. Carroll. That was, a, that was a scrimmage, I remember. You look like a dude there, man. Look, look how that. big those shoulder pads yeah. are. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the first that's thing I noticed. Like, how did yeah. you get deep with that much weight on your body? I know. God, things have changed. Look, I'm wearing hip pads. Nobody wears hip pads anymore. A lot of things. Were you in a three-point stance as a receiver? No, we were, okay. we were two-point stance. That. Yeah. Were those the old Newman gloves? Remember those yeah, in the 90s? Those are, those are big time. Yeah. John yeah. Carroll has quite a distinguished alumni. Who are a couple of the ring? Like Don Shula, I believe, was from Don there. Don Shula. There's yeah, you know, um, there's been, you know, between Josh, Josh McDaniels. McDaniels. Right. You know, the, the GM with the Texas, Nick Casario. David Caldwell. David Caldwell, yeah. Just a lot. And, and it's funny because we all kind of came in the league differently. Right. It wasn't like one person came in and hired everybody, but uh, yeah, it was a great program. It was, you know, it was a top 10 division. But it's a little fraternity program. when you see those guys right on the road. It kind of is, hey, yeah. Hey, London right. Fletcher yeah, was there. London Fletcher, he came after me. He played in the NFL for what, 12, right. 13 years. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay. Uh, what am I looking at here? Oh, that's uh, when we drafted Justin Herbert. So that was. Was uh, that the COVID year? That was a COVID year. That's so why. I'm doing the draft from our dining room table. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and I had never FaceTimed a player. Usually we, you call the player and hey, we know you know right. the greatest left you here and for whatever reason aside just the FaceTime. That's a, that's a great picture right Taren, there. Taryn, you see how happy Justin looks in yeah, that picture? Yeah, he looks really happy. Yeah, well, tell you I what, got drafted you, by a you know, NFL team, I'd be happy too. <laughs> you know who was happy? I was happy. Too. Yeah, right? So He's but, a yeah, that, that was that was a cool moment. And then you could see like on the laptop, so it was a Zoom, so I think Anthony Lynn's probably on there. The right. ownership, I think Dean's on there. So it's it was an interesting process. Was that kind of stressful setting up for that particular draft because you're really at the mercy of technology? Oh there's my. a power outage or a slow internet? I mean So the great thing was um, I don't know if it was AT and T but the but the uh, the phone internet company, they put a truck behind our house. And okay, had, they hooked you up with the really? high-end stuff? We had wow. two guys sat there for three days just in wow. case something happened. It was really cool. They okay. sat outside. Yeah, it was great. So you were covered. Yeah. Okay. There they are right there. Okay, who, oh, that's, who, who, what are we looking so at? The, the, this is the, uh, the, oh, that's the, AT &T the internet guys. team. Yeah, yeah. Wi-Fi internet just in case anything happened. <laughs> yeah, they sat out there for three days. Now, if they're Chiefs fans, they could have potentially sabotaged this. They could have. So, uh, or Denver. Right. Well, shout out to at and yeah. They did the right thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, oh, look at that. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's uh, Colts Bear Super Bowl. Wow. Yeah. What was the feeling like when all that confetti's come down? You uh, know, we won a was, Super Bowl. Yeah, it was just amazing. And it was pouring rain, too. Oh, that's okay. why I got the towel on. But uh, yeah, it was just amazing. You know, all that, you put all this work in um, with, with, these, with, with people and your staff and. You know, to finally come on. It's so almost like amazing. a sense of relief there, isn't it? Yeah, no kidding. When you get <laughs> yeah. this, when you have the ring ceremony, you, know, you open that thing up for the first time. It, what are you, are you just like? Oh my gosh, this thing is ridiculous. Oh, that Colts yeah, ring is unbelievable. Yeah, I don't have the biggest hand. I can't wear the ring. But, oh, they're like uh, brooches nowadays. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, we it's, saw it's, that. It's we saw his Colts ring. That's yeah, impressive. Right. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. All right. Oh, there you go. Look at the horse and carriage. Where's yeah. the wedding at? That's in uh, Saratoga Springs, New York. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're how young? How old are you when you got married? Jesus. About. <laughs> mid, right. Mid-20s? Mid-20s, all right. I don't know. Okay. Come on. <laughs> what is this? I didn't ask for these. They were sent to me. Is that, is that Clifford? That's, you know, just trying to help the kids, you know? <laughs> just being a good dad. And... Is that you dressed up as Clifford? It could be. Okay. It could be. I, I've heard. I don't, ha you know, I, I don't have that costume anymore. It's, <laughs> they they didn't come with descriptions, so I can't help you <laughs> yeah. this one. They just... All right. I think we got one more. Yeah. Right. There's a good Oh, one. that's this a great picture. Easy. Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah, it was a fun year. It was a great year. All the way to the CF Championship yep. game, had yep. a heck of a run. Yeah. In fact, your oldest boy, Tom, does he go by Thomas or Tom? Thomas. Yep. Played in the All-Star game last night. Yep. You were there. Yep. 
uh, got a little chippy at the yeah. end. They actually had to cancel the game. Was Thomas the one starting all those fights? Or <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> You don't want to start. You got to finish it. But no, it was uh, it, actually the game was a pretty well played game. You know, and you could tell like like two weeks of practice I think helped. Um, but you know, you give you give Dan O'Shea two weeks with with those three linebackers yeah. that were playing in that game. Like, they were monsters. So they, they pitched a shutout. But uh, yeah, I would have preferred the fourth quarter to not end up the way it did. Um, well, but uh, it was a great game. I mean, for the kids, it's just a great experience. It was a good crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Great time. Yep. So now your oldest son is going to play a little ball next year. Where's he yep. off to? Uh, Washington University in St. Louis. Okay. Yep. And did they reach out to him, or how did he find that particular? Uh, you son? know, they I, they started recruiting him last summer. Okay. Um, and uh, we're just trying to figure out where the best place, you know, academically and football wise. And uh, you know, he's really happy about it. Excited to get out. And that's great. You know, it's a good program, great school. And then your yeah. second boy, your youngest one, Nick. He's just got still one more year. He's at got one more year. Yeah. Yep. Is it tough to go back and forth from like, I mean, you've got your job, so you've got to be in Las Vegas, but you know, you still as a dad want to see your kids play. Yeah. Is that, have you been able to manage that through the years or is there sometimes conflicts of interest and it, it is what it yeah, is? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've done a lot better job uh, kind of balancing it this this past year, but it was easier because I was right down the road. Right. Um, I think I missed, you know, a couple of games because we were out of town, but I think I made, you know, majority of the games. Now coming up next year, it's gonna be a little more difficult, even though Las Vegas isn't that far away. But obviously, our work hours. That's forty-five little, minutes. Will you stay there during so, the week and then just come home on the week? Like how do? There's a yeah. It's still, I mean, it's, it's a seven-day-a-week job. So, right. But I'm, yeah. I'll, I'll figure it out because I'm not gonna. I'm not, I don't want to miss too many games. Yeah. So uh, we'll we'll figure it out. Hey, it's better than not having a job, right? So Heck yeah, <laughs> you know, right. Heck Good yeah. gig. Yep. Okay, lightning round. Lightning We're just gonna round. fire some random questions at you. Just a quick response. Nothing yeah. deeper detailed. Uh, Dole, I'll let you start the first. What one. is your favorite food? Uh, anything Italian, I'm going to go raviolis. Oh, nice. What is the number one app used on your phone? <sighs> well, right now it's... You know, Don't say TikTok. It's, it's, <laughs> it's text. I mean, I got so many text messages uh, right that. now. Just, you know, I can't tell you how many I got texted. It's all work-related, so that's the big one right now. Okay. Go ahead, Dole. What is your best memory or memories as a football player? As a football player? Um, that's a good question. We had a... My, my senior year at John Carroll, we, we finished fifth in the nation, but we didn't make the playoffs. The playoffs were, were very small then, and, and Mount Union was like a powerhouse in Division oh, three. right, yeah. So, um, you know, we were, we were undefeated. They were undefeated, like, the second last game of the year. This, actually, this isn't the best moment, but we, we lost by three to them. We would have gone to the playoffs and gone farther. But uh, the week before, we had beaten our big rivals okay. um, in, a, in a big game. Bolton Wallace was a really good school, so... Oh, that uh, might be the boss. Uh, you want to yeah, check that real quick? No, but it's work. But, uh, <laughs> okay, well, we'll, but we're uh, almost done here. Yeah. You know what? I, I'll, this is a quick. So when I was in high school, um, my high school would play one game at the Bill Stadium at Ralph. Oh Wilson wow! Stadium. So that was you know for a high school kid to sit to That's use amazing. these NFL locker rooms, play in a stadium in front of about you know 500 people. Yeah. Seats 80,000. Um, scored a touchdown in in, in Rich in, nice. in oh, Ralph nice. Wilson Stadium in the end zone. So that was probably my best high school. What moment. was the route? Uh, it was a little like uh, in and out, like slant in and come out. Okay. And then, you know. You broke it? Broke it, yep. Nice. Okay. We actually answered this one earlier, but I'll ask it again anyway. My question was, have you ever seen that Kevin Costner movie about the draft? <laughs> and on a scale of 1 to 10, how accurate was that? You know, it wasn't that. So I had not, when I did that YouTube video, um, I had not seen the movie before. Oh, okay. So that was. Oh, so you're seeing those clips for the first yeah, time. Yeah, so okay. I was seeing wow. it for the first time, so they didn't want to see my reaction. Right. Um, it actually wasn't that bad. Okay. Um, but yeah, there were some things in there that just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. It's not going to happen. Okay. Yeah. But um, it was a great piece that they did because it really was me in, you know, in real time watching it and just kind of asking, hey, is this real? Can you run that back? Let me see that again. Like, would that guy really do that? Or yeah, that? would okay. he really do that? But um, no, that, that, was, that was pretty neat to do. Okay. Besides being a diehard Raiders fan, I'm an absolute music nerd. So I always like to talk to people about music. So who's your favorite singer or band? Yeah, I just, I don't really have one. You know, I just like, as far as a favorite band. What would be on um, Tom Telesco's playlist right now? Well, we're, we're hoping to, to get to uh, U2 at the Sphere oh, nice. in a couple of weeks. That's, that's the plan. You know, have the family come up and do that. So um, my buddy yeah, went to that and said it was yeah, oh, really? yeah, it's, 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 it's He sent me videos from it. It's, it's like unbelievable. Yeah. I'll let you guys know how it is. Okay, last round of the draft. Are you picking the best player on the board or uh, need? Uh, in the seventh round? Yeah. The best player up there. Okay. Yeah, it's like. Because you filled your needs at that point more or less. Yeah, and, you know, we don't really we don't really fill needs in that draft just because when you're, the needs we have at draft time, those needs are going to change. You know, you're drafting a player for four or five years. Right. So I'm really thinking more down the road. And down the road, I don't even know what our needs will be in a couple of years. So right. it, it's a lot of it's the best player there. But certainly the sixth, seventh round, I mean, 
hate to call them lottery tickets, but the, the hit rate's so low in that round. So we just want to get the best player, hopefully makes a practice. I mean, the Niners, it worked out for them, Mr. Irrelevant. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a little uncommon, but yeah, right. but that's, you know, they saw some things in Brock Purdy enough, hey, let's take a chance on him in the seventh round, and then, you know, lo and behold, he's taking him to the Super Bowl. But um, yeah, yeah the, the hit rate's kind of low, so just trying to find someone they at least could make it on special teams early on, make the practice squad, and then kind of develop. Um, so yeah, it's really the best player there. Okay. Yep. I got one more duel. You got, who do you got? I got a couple more. Okay. Cool. What's the coolest place you've ever visited or gone on vacation to? <sighs> you know, we, we've been lucky. You know, we, I love going to Maui. Oh, yeah, that's, Maui's always that's, great. That, that, that's big for me. So, um, and we also like, you saw that picture up there from Saratoga Springs, New York. We try and go back there. Right. You know, once a summer on Lake George, it's like a great place, a great family place for us to go. Nice. I wouldn't say that's, uh, you know, not like going to Europe, but we love it there. Right. Yeah. Okay. Would you ever consider Coach Hedig or Coach O'Shea as a position coach on the Raiders? <laughs> Absolutely. And so you guys That's know those are CDM coaches or yeah. one was the former coach. Absolutely. I mean, look, look what uh, O'Shea did last know, night. Right? We can all you know, pitch a shutout. You've watched Kevin Hedig's offense at CDM for a number of years. Um, it's funny you say that. There's um, you know, the football knowledge of a high school coach and a pro coach, it's the same. Right. Like there's not, it's not like pro coaches, college coaches, high school coaches, and their, their ability to coach another game is lower. It's, it's not. Right. Um, I always tell my high school coach who's still there at St. Francis in Buffalo, New York, like he could coach for us tomorrow. Right. Like that. Um, but it's just those guys, they, they decide to take the path that I want to, I'm going to coach young kids and develop them and, and that you kind of in the high school level. If those guys ever wanted to work at the higher college level or the pro level, they could probably get there. I, so my dad used to play in the NFL, and he played with Sam White, who was a longtime Bengal yep. and Tampa Bay coach. And I remember I was talking to him once about you know coaching. He said, whatever level you want to coach at, just start at that level. If you want to be a high school coach, start at the high school level. If you want to be a college guy, start at the college level. Pro, same thing, kind of like how you did. Mm -hmm. It didn't translate to coaching, but you don't like go from high school to college to pro like there's some kind of ascension. If you want to be a pro guy, just hang around the pro facilities, yeah, college. Is that I, I will say, I mean, you can, um, I've seen plenty of coaches that, start off in high school and do and then the and then get like a ga job in college and work right. your way up a little bit and then get a chance to come in, in, the, in the nfl and then right. and then come back down to college again and then come back down to right. high school again um so yeah so it's not necessarily like hey like if you want to be a pro coach you have to find an nfl opportunity because remember there's only 32 teams right like, there's a lot more colleges only so many positions yep a lot more high schools so and right. a lot more opportunities there good so we all love football we're all football fans so who's your favorite football player ever you know, that's like asking me, like, which of my three kids would I like the most? Right. You know, so that's, you know, I was, uh, I was an intern for the Buffalo Bills in the, in the early 90s when they had Thurman Thomas and Jim Kelly and Andre Reid and Bruce Smith. I mean, just loaded. Yeah, a lot and of then, guys. And then I go to, the, you know, go to the Colts, and we had Marvin Harrison and Dwight Freeney and Peyton Manning, Edron James, and, and, you know, and I come to the Chargers, and we got, you know, Philip Rivers and <laughs> yeah. Keenan Allen. So it's just like I've been so lucky to be around some of the greatest players in the game. Um, and learn from them, really. But, uh, yeah, to, to have one, I don't – can't do it. Right. You know, it's I like with Sunset that's, that's I tough, mean, no. you think about it, like, in a much smaller level. No, it's like, – The CDM yeah. guys are great. The Harbor guys are great. The, I mean, I could talk about every team. You, you get to know these coaches and players, and they're great. So how do you pick I one? I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, like me, I'm going to go Tim Brown, but then I'm going to go Marcus Allen and, you know. You yeah, I was forever. a big Tim Brown fan when I was – yeah, when I was younger. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well – Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been an honor and a privilege yeah, to uh, talk yeah, to you guys. Congratulations. Many things on your plate. The fact yeah. that you take time to spend a little time in the studio with us, we really appreciate well, it. Well, no, I mean, I love high school football. I love everything about it. Um, you know, I'd always say, like, like there, there's just lessons you learn and traits you develop playing high school football that you can't duplicate anywhere else. Yeah. No extracurricular activity, no other sport. We're biased, obviously. Yeah. Um, but what it does for these kids, and then the programs around here are so good. They're so well coached. So much talent in Orange County. I've Live all over the country. I've seen high school football all over the country. It's as good here as anywhere. It's we Texas, say that all the time. Oh, think we some tunnel, yes. Orange County is no, the spot. It's, it's really. I, I thought you know San Diego was really good. Orange County is amazing. And I put up against you know Texas and we don't. We use up like with our players. We always have these big discussions like who has the best high school football. Right. So we got the kids from Florida, the kids from Texas, Western Pennsylvania, Ohio, wherever. I mean, I'll put these teams up against anybody. Okay, this guy's resume speaks for itself. So if it's good enough for uh, Mr. Thomas, yeah, God, absolutely. I'll, I'll take that 100%. Well, again, thank you so much for coming down. We really appreciate you yep. taking the time. No Best problem. of luck this year. Yeah. Appreciate it. I guess Sunset Raider Rewind. Now, yeah, uh, go Raiders. Go yeah, right. Raiders. Uh, Cole, cue that music. It's yeah, going to be Autumn Lynn going here. Let's hear that. Here.